hear you have something for me. I do. Commander Baron wanted me to show you how to customize your weapons. Something I've been working on for some time now. You see, your standard phased plasma is in a 40 watt range. However, you can upgrade its damage, shooting rate, or stability using decoded chips. The same ones you've been collecting from fallen terminators. You can do the upgrades yourself. When you're done, go to the quartermaster. I believe he has something for you as well. Just try it. I don't have all day. I did it. Seems easy. Oh, huh, good for you. Uh, now please leave. I'm Private Rivers. You got something for me? I've been told you're using old goggles from the Pacific Division. Those aren't even standard issue anymore. Commander Baron asked me to hook you up with the latest version. These babies come equipped with a high-quality camera. What do I do with them? The idea is that when you reach Pasadena, you'll take pictures of Skynet's offensive installations. When you find them, put the goggles on, then aim and shoot. The pictures will be automatically sent to a military satellite that we hijacked from Skynet. They'll give us the necessary intel to prepare for when the Annihilation Line comes. That's it? That's it. We have a place ready for you here when you come back. Before you leave, take a look and see if there's anything else you need. I can get my hands on almost anything, but I don't normally hand out freebies. <laughs>
Do you need anything? Can I see your hardware? That's it then. You're leaving us and going back to Pasadena. Not yet. I need to collect the rest of my stuff from our hideout. Fine by me. Let's go. Please, you need to tell me what happened there. Where's my husband? <coughs> we were ambushed on our way out of the metro station. There was nothing we could do. He died protecting us. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Thank you for telling me this. You did good by telling her. I don't care what Baron says. That woman deserved to hear the truth. Not knowing would destroy her. Believe me, Aaron would kill to know what happened to her husband. Patrick! Look, look! Ryan fixed it! Ryan fixed the bus! <laughs> That's great news! Did you help? No. I was there and helping Mark. He's doing much better now. I hear that you fixed the bus. Yeah, finally. What about you? You meet the resistance? Yeah, finally. I'll talk to Aaron. took a bite out of me. But I don't remember getting... Is that him? Yeah, that's him. Jacob! Laura tells me you're looking for volunteers that'll join the resistance. You can count me in. It only seems fair since I owe you my life. Looks like things are finally starting to go our way. I heard about Mark. What happened? It was a close call, but he's on the mend now. And I have to thank you for that. So, thank you. So, what's new with you? I've been ordered to go to Pasadena to collect some intel. Is there anything you need from there? Right now, I don't need anything. But there's something you might be interested in. When we were running away the other day, Colin was supposed to bring something. Boxes of adrenaline, painkillers, and who knows what else. Since he didn't bring anything with him, I'd imagine everything's still there. Those stimulants might be useful to you. When used in small doses, they can improve focus and alertness. If I were you, I'd take a look. You never told me you had a husband. <laughs> you never asked. Was he at that camp with you? He was. Sweet little man. I had to take care of him when they sent us to work, because he was so fragile. Back at the camp, I used to think that the machines kept Peter alive to get me to cooperate. So when there was an opportunity to run, we had to take it. And we did. We ran with this little child that I had started to love. I felt that she was mine. What was her name? Her name was Taylor. Peter said it sounded too manly, so I said, Good, we'll finally have a man in the family. 
But as you know nowadays, no story has a happy ending. She died shortly after. We buried her, and we stopped talking to each other. Eventually, the Annihilation Line caught up with us. We got separated. I ran away. He did too. At least, I hope he did. That's all. You didn't change your mind about joining the Resistance? No. I'm packed and ready to go. You're the one that kept saying that we're going when in fact we're not. Oh, you really pissed me off, I must say. Moving out? I am. Do you need anything from Pasadena? No. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes. There's nothing that I need from there. I see you got that bus running again. You didn't think I would, did you? Well, don't write me off just yet. I still got it. Anyhow, I got something for you. It's called a termination knife. It's supposed to shut down a Terminator with a single stab, so if you sneak in and you want to take them down silently, well, that's your go-to weapon. I guess you could say it terminates Terminators. Wow, that was almost as bad as Jan. Where did you get that? A group of travelers came by earlier. We traded, talked for a while. Actually, they said something that got my attention. Something about meeting a guy out there who kept asking about Jacob Rivers. They said he didn't seem right. You don't think it's that thing that you told us about before, do you? Sorry, I probably should have said something right away. What's on your mind? You really got me thinking about old Tucker again. In times like these, I wouldn't mind having him around. He always know what to do. He was the only one who didn't lose his mind after Judgment Day. What did he do? He finally found me hiding below the stage. I was such a nervous wreck. So to try to calm me down, he just said, that band sucked anyway. Tucker said, we need to be calm right now. I listened to him. We all did, survivors from the concert. Did you drive someplace safe? It was my first call. Just drive. Gave it a shot. We kept running into these sandstorms. Every car fucked up after a couple of miles. Turned out that atomic dust ain't so great with engines. Finally, we found a couple houses, but the people there were as confused as we were. All the communication went to shit. 
Tucker managed to find some batteries, and uh, we sat in front of our boom box. They started to list cities to avoid. Cities that were hit by the nuclear bombs. Did your city get hit? Uh, the list was long, until the very end, I was hoping that it wouldn't come up. But it did, and somehow it managed to surprise me. We looked at each other crying. We just wanted to go home and be with family, but Tucker said that for now, the safest place there is is right where we were. So we decided to stay and start a camp. Have you changed your mind about joining the Resistance? No. No, I have not. I think I'm better off anywhere that bus takes me. I'm moving out tomorrow. Anyone who wants to join is more than welcome to, but I don't suppose you're interested. You're going to Pasadena? Yep, I am. I have a mission for you, a secret mission, super important. Probably the most important of them all. What is it? Could you bring me my chalk? Chalk? Yeah, it's at my house. The one with the beware sign on the side. Could you bring it to me? I mean, if you could. I did bring you that bullet one time. I'll see what I can do. Cool. Rig this place with traps. <laughs> Better be careful. <laughs> Has to be a hospital nearby.
I've encountered Skynet's plasma storage. You have a green light to destroy any Skynet structures in Pasadena. But keep in mind, that is not your highest priority. If you want to save ammo, overloading the main computer and any storage facility will do the trick. Huh. Side. That has to be Jennifer's house. Jennifer's father. <sighs> Poor guy. Now where's the rest? Huh. Is that a map to your hiding place, Patrick?
mission you've got there, Patrick. I should do it. Sending it right now. Well done, Private. Now proceed with your main objective.
Dispensary. This is it. Looks like Colin was really prepared. Or maybe he was planning to open his own pharmacy once this was all over. Huh. Aaron will appreciate that.
sending you the first set of pictures. That's exactly what we need. Move to the second point. Going through. Got it. One more to go. T forty seven neutralized. That's the last one. Good job with these pictures, Rivers. We're one step closer to preparing a counterattack. I'm starting to see why Skynet isn't so fond of you. Now get your ass back to the shelter.
Jacob, how is Pasadena? Uh, you know what? Forget I asked. I don't want to know. I'm just glad that you're all right. And how are you doing? I guess I'm a little nervous before tomorrow. Aren't you curious about what happened in Pasadena? No. I think I'd rather keep that place in the past. Actually, I have a confession to make. I've never been outside of Pasadena until now. Can you believe that? That's not surprising. After all, that's where your home is. Where it used to be. Right now, I'm going to try someplace new to call home. I did my traveling through pictures and postcards that wanderers brought with them. My favorite had a little flamingo drinking water from a lake on it. Its long red neck curved like a snake. Patrick's mother gave me that postcard. Hmm. It's funny how I never met my mother, but I was around to see Patrick's leave him. I'm sorry to hear about your mother. Don't be. I had a pretty good childhood, apart from the nuclear holocaust and all. I remember the day Patrick's mom brought him in. They were both tired and dirty, so we took care of them. Patrick was crying a lot. He was teething at the time. I think that was what scared her away. She just couldn't handle the crying. How was she? I loved her. For the time she was with us, I liked to pretend she was my mother, too. After she took off, I was devastated. But my father said, You need to grow up. You have a brother now. So I burned the postcard. The little red flamingo flew up in flames. And I promised myself I'd never be weak again. But I guess we all need someone we can be weak with sometimes, don't we? I never asked you. What are you planning to do tomorrow? I've been meaning to tell you earlier, but I panicked. And that's because... I decided to go with Ryan. We'll find somewhere safe, away from all this. You have to understand, I need to do what's best for Patrick. I'm his big sis. I need to protect him. I... I haven't told him yet. He'll be devastated leaving you and Aaron, but I think it's for the best. Wake up! We need to move. What? What's going on? Everyone, wake up! You need to get out of here. Who the fuck are you? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you can't stay here any longer. She asks a question, and I suggest answering. You don't want to do that. I've got this place rigged with explosives, and there's a detonator in my pocket. You got what? Would you mind? Lower your gun, Ryan. He's the one that saved my life. What do you want from us? You have to get out of here. Skynet's on its way. They finally found you. What do you mean, they found us? They were looking for us? Not for you. For him. He's essential to winning this war. Skynet knows that. That's why they've been following him for months. I have to make sure nothing happens to him. In a couple of minutes, an infiltrator will walk in here trying to kill him. I can't let that happen. We have to bury that Terminator here once and for all. All right, everybody, you heard him. Let's get moving. I'll get the bus ready. There's no time for that. There's a passage here. It will lead you out. Use it. <gasps> what was that? All right, everyone, get out! 
Jacob! Give me that. It's the same one. It's the same model. Leave! Now! How the hell's he still alive? Go! 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 Watch out! Don't just stand there! Run! Baron listened to us. She could no longer deny that this infiltrator was a real threat. She decided to take everyone in, on her terms. The shelter was on high alert, but thanks to the intel I gathered in Pasadena, we slowed the advance of the Annihilation Line and gained some time. Just enough to start preparing the counterattack. Sergeant? At ease. Well, look at you, Sergeant. When you helped us in Pasadena the other day, I was trying really hard not to panic because you were only a private. Sorry for underestimating you. I guess I should salute or something? Getting ready for another scavenging run? No, I just came out here to catch my breath. Baron is giving us the entire evening off, believe it or not. Doesn't sound like her. How's Patrick? Every day a little better. Aaron says he'll be back on his feet in no time. She's done a great job with him. I wish I could repay her somehow. It just doesn't seem that she needs anything. I need to report to Baron. Rivers, DN 46890. The commander is expecting you in the control room, Sergeant. Marachino cherries again. I don't get it. How did they bring that buggy down here? Hey, I'm just catching up with Mark. I'll get back to work in a couple of minutes. You won't tell, right? <clears throat> Uh, b but no, seriously, you won't tell, right? I'm going out soon. I haven't made my daily quota yet. I still have three more rats to catch. If you see one, let me know, okay? Are you all right? Me? <clears throat> Honey, I'm about the most well-adjusted person in this goddamn place. It's the others you should be concerned about. How's Patrick doing? He's fine, but it wouldn't kill you if you checked on him yourself. Jennifer? I'm worried about her. I'm the one that asked Baron to give her team a little break. 
Jennifer's been busy scavenging supplies for the soldiers, and she hardly had time to see Patrick. And now she's finally got a day off. She's avoiding him like the plague. You mean Ryan? Ryan ain't so hot either, but that's another story. Is there anything you need? No. I have to say, the Resistance is pretty well supplied. Don't tell me you miss running errands for me. I don't believe that for a second. And what about something other than medicine? Honey, I'm not shy. I'll let you know if I need anything, okay? But thank you for asking. Take care. How are you doing? Good. Erin's going to let me leave in a couple of days. Thanks for bringing that chalk. I've been drawing a lot. I'd be so bored without it. How do you like living in the shelter? There's a lot of people here. I like that. I heard a funny joke yesterday. You want to hear it? Yeah, tell me. What's brown and sticky? A stick! <laughs> That's funny. I know, right? How's Jennifer? She's out a lot, but I understand. She's a scavenger. I have to go. Spider Scout again. Man, I saw it crawling through the shelter earlier. Almost gave me a heart attack. You wanted to see me? You're finally here. Good. I have a special task for you. I want you to head downtown to check on the doctor. Doctor? Alvin. He's out there making sure that our defense systems are working properly. Ever since we went radio silent, I had a small team of trustworthy messengers maintaining communication between our outposts. They haven't returned, so I want you to go downtown and see why that happened. Could be nothing, but Connor doesn't want any hiccups while he's up there in North Division preparing the attack on Skynet's central core. Is there a problem with the radio? The Annihilation Line is within spitting distance of downtown. We suspect that Skynet will be intercepting all transmissions from that location. So for now, we're going radio silent. That's why I need you to go there personally. Central Core? Skynet's main reactor. The source of all their power. We shut down the Central Core, we shut down Skynet. Connor's preparing the attack as we speak. So you understand we can't have any critical complications at this stage. If you don't mind me asking, how did you end up here? Excuse me if I act a little surprised, Sergeant. But no one in here thinks it's wise to ask their superior personal questions. But since you did, I'll humor you. So, how did I get here? The same way you did. I was born. Raised, then given a gun. We don't really have a say in what we do, do we? Or do I assume too much? Was it any different for you? Hmm? Why do you fight, Sergeant? It's the right thing to do. There's nothing noble in what we do. Humans were fighting humans since the beginning of time. It just so happens that right now we have a common enemy. If it wasn't for the machines, we'd probably be fighting each other. So, I guess we should thank the machines for teaching us compassion. 
I guess we should. I have my special way of thanking them. A shot to the skull from a plasma rifle. Besides, I'm not a fighter. When I go out there in the middle of the night with my Westinghouse, I'm not looking for a fight. I look to seek and conquer. I'm not a fighter. I'm a bully. Who wants to be a bully? Believe me, there will come a time when you'll become whatever you need to be to survive. No one ever stands up to bullies. But I have to admit, it has its downsides. One of them being that no one ever asks me a personal question. At least not since Perry died. So congratulations, Rivers. Takes guts to stand up to a bully. I guess since your promotion, you got a little more cocky. Good for you. More wounded! We need a medic over here! I'm telling you, I saw something. What's happening, Private? A couple of aerials flew in and dropped containers full of metals. They started shooting while our defense systems did nothing. What about the doctor? Where's Alvin? He's still out there. All right. There's one more thing. Before I got hit and dragged here, I saw something. I'm not sure, but... I think it was one of our own soldiers that led Skynet's attack. Sergeant, we're outnumbered, and they keep bringing more wounded. We don't stand a chance. We have to evacuate. Is Alvin still there? He is, sir. Then we're not leaving. We have to bring him back and see what the hell is going on with those defenses, and brief Commander Baron on what's happening here. I'm moving out. You stay here with the wounded. You want me to break the radio silence? At this point, it doesn't matter, does it? Understood. Go ahead, sir. You two follow me. We have to reach those defense systems. Yes, sir. Fighters up ahead! Got it! Lead the way! This way! Good to see you, Sergeant. What's the status? We've got a defensive perimeter set up just down the road. Doesn't seem to be working. Skynet dropped reinforcements behind your back. Now they're between a rock and a hard place. All right, we need to reach our guys. Let's clear the way.
Keep moving. Here they come! T-47, watch out! Flank it! Take out those smaller units! before it reboots! We need to rescue the dog before those tanks reach us! Oh shit! We're too late! They're already here! Wait here! I'll go get the doctor!
Kelvin! Oh my god, I'm actually glad to see you! What happened here? Why are the defense systems not working? They are working, but their target filtering has been reset to non-hostile. One of Baron's messengers came with the order to temporarily change it, so I did! Baron's messengers, we need to leave now! Yes, let's do that. I'm all for that. Are you all right? We need to move. You don't have to tell me twice. Escort secured. Ah! Go! I don't like this. I don't like any of this. Ariel! Okay, go! It's turning around! It's right behind us! Don't look back! Good idea! You go talk to Commander Baron. I've had enough excitement for one day. Still. Don't move. Thanks for getting us out of there, Sergeant. Rivers, you want to explain to me what the hell happened? We lost downtown. I know that much. But how's that possible? What happened to our defense systems? Alvin says one of our soldiers came with an order directly from you, to reset the target settings for non-lethals. He said what? Ah, uh, alright. Uh, this is what I want you to do. Find whoever is responsible for sending that order. All the messengers have GPS tracking, so we're keeping tabs on their location. Find them and bring them to me. Understood. And Rivers, despite what I might say about our resident egghead, I truly have a hard time believing that my men are incompetent. So expect the unexpected. And you know what I mean by that. Do you think the Infiltrator's back? We won't be sure until you find those messengers and confirm my suspicion. Now that you mention it... What? One of our soldiers said that it looked as if one of our guys led Skynet's attack. That only supports my case. As soon as you know what's going on, radio me. Who's Perry? 
You mentioned him before. The best soldier I ever fought beside. He was the one who brought me into the Resistance. <laughs> it's actually a funny story. Years ago, when I was just a kid, I saw a Skynet drone attacking some guy. Without thinking, I grabbed a rock and jumped on it. The guy was screaming the whole time while I beat the metal to the ground. Only when I was done did I realize he was trying to stop me. Seems you were a tough kid. Life didn't exactly soften me much. To survive, I embraced the savage it made me. He was a resistance scientist, and that drone was one of his projects. So you can imagine he wasn't too happy when I smashed it to pieces. But he wasn't alone. There was this huge guy with a rifle on his shoulder, almost choking with laughter. <laughs> I sure made his day. That huge guy. Was that Perry? Yes, it was. Commander Perry was in charge of this division before me. That scientist later told me that was the first time he ever heard Perry laugh. Somehow, Perry and I connected. He taught me how to channel my anger and get it under control. He introduced me to Connor, and that's how I got to the 132nd. Whatever happened to Perry? Skynet got hold of our position. We had to leave our shelter. There were a lot of casualties, and he was one of them. He died a soldier. I'd never thought I'd be reminiscing about the day I met them. This may come as a surprise to you, but it was the first medal I ever destroyed. Sounds like you were late in joining the Destroy Skynet campaign. Before that, it was people, not machines. But that's a different story. You want me to break radio silence? They have a head start on us. At this point, we can't afford to lose any time. Jacob, got a minute? What's up? I know you're busy, but I found something. Something I think you'll like. A tape from back in the day. I want to play it for you, but my boombox is busted. So uh, if you're out there and find one that works, bring it to me, okay? Can't you ask Jennifer or one of the other scavengers for help? I already did, but they couldn't find anything. Just think about it, okay? <coughs> Jacob. How are the wounded doing? The few that came back, they're doing fine. We patched them up and at this point we're just sitting and waiting. <coughs> What's in your mind? Ever since you asked me about Peter, I can't stop thinking about him. Like a teenage girl. <laughs> That's your fault, young man. Are you thinking about anything in particular? About the day we first met. It was long before Judgment Day. I was getting coffee on my way to school. I noticed him because he was buying tea in a coffee shop. I don't know why, but that made me smile. Maybe it's stupid. Maybe I should stop thinking about him. He's... he's probably dead by now. God knows he can't take care of himself.
Do you want to find him? Sometimes I think I should drop everything and go. I would get an earful from Baron, but she's nothing I can't handle. Anyway, what I didn't tell you before is that during Judgment Day, I lost a child. Our child. I don't know if it would have happened anyway, but I like to blame the machines for that. I think that Peter felt with Taylor we were given a second chance. God, he's still out there waiting for me, isn't he? Probably sitting in his rocking chair back in our house in Hollywood Hills. Oh, where the hell are you, Peter? Hey, <laughs> glad to see you alive. And thanks for sticking your neck out for us. I wanted to tell you that, you know, just in case. Hey, are you all right? We just got the news about the attack. They're getting closer, aren't they? Need anything? Can I see your hardware? Do you need anything? Can I see your hardware? Thank <laughs> you. 
Wasn't expecting to find you here. You always seem to be out these days. Yeah, that's true. Lately, I've been making extra runs to stock up on resources. The truth is, I was even thinking about leaving. But right now, I'm just waiting for my team to head back to downtown to look for other survivors. Let's hope there still are some. <clears throat> Is there something on your mind? Actually, I have a secret to tell you. You've a fan. Patrick really looks up to you. It's good for him to have a role model. And I don't think he could have chosen better. Thank you. It means a lot. Are you kidding? <laughs> it's the least I can do for helping us all this time. If you hadn't found us back in Pasadena, I don't know what would have happened. Well, actually I do. Exactly what the others said would happen. People were talking about the Annihilation Line months before it came. <clears throat> My father, of course, tried to turn it all into a joke. Knowing your father, it couldn't have been a good joke. <laughs> no, it really wasn't. But I wanted to believe him. I think we all did. He tried very hard to keep everyone from worrying. Maybe a little too hard. You could feel the mood change at the house. The community my father tried to build started falling apart. Fewer and fewer people were coming by. And if they did, they weren't always friendly. We started to notice things going missing. Little things at first. People got nervous, and with time, it even got to my father. <coughs> did it ever get to you? Of course it did. For the first time in my life, there were only the three of us at the house. After a while, my father changed the sign from welcome to beware. He put a lock on the door, <coughs> and started carrying a shotgun. I didn't even know he owned a gun. He always said he didn't believe in them. He wanted us to leave our house and run, but he didn't want to listen. Said it was the only place he could keep us safe. <laughs> Thanks for letting me spill my guts like that. I see that Patrick's doing better. He is. He's a fighter. Certainly has more courage than I do. <clears throat> Why did you want to leave? In the face of what's going on now, it will sound stupid, but... <sighs> just got to be a bit much, you know? With Patrick hurt, I started to wonder if I'm even doing him any good by sticking around. I've been trying to protect him all this time, but I couldn't. I've proven that much already. First in Pasadena, then at our hideout. I was thinking that maybe he'd be safer here at the shelter. But don't worry, I changed my mind since. <laughs> Plasma containers. Looks like Skynet's here for good. Flamethrower! If I could get close enough to take a picture...
enough. Not good enough. Not good enough needs to be perfect. Not good enough needs to be perfect. What's that music? Seems to be coming from here.
Upstairs. Who left this here? It's probably a trap. Better be worth it, Ryan. I wonder if one of our guys dealt with this first. Radio. Aaron 
Bell's right, Skynet's listening. Time to look for the second tracker.
care of it, that might slow them down a little. I think I'm getting closer. It's got to be here. got him too. Oh, his goggles look intact. Let's see the last picture he took. The infiltrator. It's back. Baron was right. Commander! Talk to me. They're dead. Everything turned out the way you said it would. Copy that. Get out of...
Destroyed. Good to hear, Rivers. Now proceed with your mission. You're still alive? Apparently Skynet's got a real hard-on for you, so we figured why not use you as bait? Aren't you afraid that Skynet will bring a lot of firepower if they know we're both here? Afraid? No. Prepared for that eventuality? Yes. We've got eyes on the ambush site from every angle. If anyone shows up, it means they were listening. What if it's one of our guys, or just a scavenger? Too bad. We can't have anyone or anything sabotage our plan. Not this time. This time? We were very close once before. For years, we've been preparing for the final attack. But it took just one man to fuck everything up. That day, Perry... Our previous field commander died, and I inherited control of South Division. Since then, I've been making sure that no one fucks up again. We've got movement. Take position. What do you have? A hooded man's walking down the street. Might be a scavenger. Rivers, you saw him. Is it the same model? Is it the infiltrator? I can't tell. We're waiting for your signal. I think that might be it. You think? Good enough for me. Cease fire! Cease fire! Target down! I repeat, target down! Go check him! Eyes on the target. Proceed with caution. Is he dead? What the fuck? It's the target! You can't get away. Fire at will! He's in the open! It's in the open! It's a fucking machine! Against the wall! We've got it now! What the fuck? Everyone on me! It's carrying a second generation plasma rifle! I want it! It won't fucking die! Shoot!
Take cover! Open fire! That's one of the son of a bitch. It's inside! Rivers! Rivers, we're trying to get through. You can't let it get away, you hear? Commander, we got it. We finally got it. Good job, Rivers. Stay there. We're on our way. There was no doubt anymore. Skynet had created a cybernetic organism. It was designed to blur the line between a man and a machine. People started to think that there were Terminators amongst us, wolves in sheep's clothes. Some of us left, even though we hadn't seen any other infiltrators yet. Or at least, we didn't think we had. And that fear of not knowing was what turned the tide of this war. That night, Skynet 1. Uh, I still have to run some tests, so f for now I would say no. We need some more time, Connor. I know you don't want to hear this, Commander, but if there's one person who can help us, it's Dr. Mack. Mack? It, we don't even know if he's alive. He is. He's in the Hollywood Hills. We knew a time would come when we'd need him again, so we've kept an eye on him. Wait. You've been watching him without telling me? Let your emotions cloud your judgment before, Commander. That's why I decided that Mac's whereabouts were no longer this your This is bullshit. Concern. He can't just magically fix all of our problems. He's a man, not a god. A man that makes that's mistakes. Enough, Commander. You know what happened last time. He's the reason Perry's dead. I said that's enough. Sergeant Rivers? Yes, sir. Techcom believes that being marked for termination is a badge of honor. A sign that we're doing something right. We wear it proudly. And knowing you're wearing such a badge, Rivers, is all I need to trust you with handling this mission.
Commander Baron will fill you in on the details. Good luck, soldier. Over and out. <clears throat> Looks like you're going to Hollywood Hills. Dr. Edwin Mack is the one who taught us how to use Skynet's weapons, so there's a chance he can do it again. Take him that second generation plasma rifle and see if he's able to reprogram it. If we want to use Skynet's weapons, we need to bypass their encryption lockouts. How will I find him? He's obsessed with surveillance. So when you get there, look for any cameras, biometric sensors, or any other tech stuff. He should be around. That's it. What do you need? Um, anything I should know about Dr. Mack before I leave? Only that he can't be trusted and he's highly manipulative. So you need to stay cautious. Was Mack the one whose drone you smashed? Yes. Yes, it was. I've never told this to anyone, but... Before I met Mac and Perry, I was wandering alone. <clears throat> Didn't have a map, so I drew one myself. The first people I came across were two guys. Old enough to remember Judgment Day. We camped out together. They gave me advice, we shared some stories. Sounds nice, right? See, there are still good people out there. <laughs> they weren't good. Although, not cutting my throat in my sleep makes them more or less gentlemen. When I woke up, all my things were gone, including my map. There I was, lost in the desert. Thirst and hunger. I knew I was gonna die. I passed out with my face in the sand. But next thing, I was lying in a bed, bathed and wearing clean clothes. I'm guessing there's no happy ending to this story either. You're starting to learn. Through the window I saw thousands of Terminators. First I thought it was a work camp. But it was something else. A Skynet research facility. They kept me alive, but I didn't know why. I thought I was the only human there. But after a while, someone came into my cell. A man. Well-dressed, clean-shaven. You want to take a guess who that was? One of those guys who robbed you? No. He was a traitor to his race. Bastard was selling every piece of knowledge the machines didn't have. In return, they gave him everything he wanted. When he was done stuffing his face with food, he had another request. He wanted a whore. It lasted months until I got to wrap a towel around his neck and make his eyes pop. You don't want to see people for what they really are. I've seen their true face. That traitor, those two guys in the desert, Mac. They all showed it to me. It's not pretty. The truth is, the only reason I fight for the resistance is because I despise people just a little less than the machines. Sure, let's trust someone who gets called Dr. Death. That won't bite us in the ass. In the meantime, I'll see what I can learn from the new CPU we acquired from that infiltrator. This could be the breakthrough that we've all been waiting for. I need to concentrate, so please don't disturb me. Jacob, do you have a minute? Of course. I've heard that you're going to Hollywood Hills. Well, with Baron yelling like that, the whole shelter heard. He wanted me to tell you if I needed anything, so here it is. When you get to Hollywood Hills, could you stop by my old house? It's near the Griffith Park tennis courts. I wonder if Peter went there and left something for me. 
I know he'd be stupid to go there since now it's behind the Annihilation line, but then again, he was always full of stupid ideas. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Look at him. He never talks to anyone. He just sits there. I bet he's one of those machines. Why do you think Skynet doesn't have their plants in the South? I don't think. I just hope. <clears throat> Everyone's leaving. I think we should as well. Yeah, but where to? Jacob. What's the situation like in the shelter? Not that great. People are getting nervous. A lot have already left and even more plan to leave. Even Mark and Laura saw them packing earlier. And what about you? Uh, just the thought of running against making me sick. Must be getting old. Plus, we got everything we could need right here. Where else would I go? Besides, I have faith that Baron would never let anything happen to this place. She's way too uptight about security. What happened after you started your camp? Honestly, not that much. At least not in the beginning. When we gave up on the idea of getting in touch with anyone, we just tried to adapt. Temperatures fell, we had to scavenge for food. All of a sudden, that became our life. When did you first hear about Skynet? Oh, that came years later. We did hear some rumors about robot warriors, but you must understand how crazy it sounded back then. And that wasn't even the most insane story out there. My favorite one was about the radioactive squirrel zombies. Well, I know how stupid it sounds, but we managed to have fun in our little commune. I still had my guitar with me. We talked a lot about how we're going to be famous, because we're the only living band in the world. What was your band's name? Well, we were thinking about changing it to Survivors, but something similar was already taken. We were just stupid kids, not realizing what was going on. We paid the price for it the first time we saw a tin can. I was tuning my guitar when I heard a strange noise. I found out later that it was a T-400. Must have heard me play. It didn't even have the decency to look scary. Maybe if it did, we wouldn't have just stood there when it started firing. What did Tucker do? Well, of course, he was the first one to help. He grabbed a lead pipe and ran up trying to kill it. He screamed like he was leading us to battle. A tin can got Tucker with a single bullet. Bam! Just like that. Seven other people died before we finally destroyed that thing. Ironically enough, I was the one who delivered the final blow. Safe to say, it was the beginning of a new era. Earlier, you said that a new era started. What changed? Well, for one thing, with Tucker dead, I became the new leader of the group. Something I never expected or wanted, for that matter. What did you do about it? That same night, I looked around at all those people who survived, and I felt scared. Scared of what they expected of me. I started to walk away like I was on autopilot. I don't know if I wanted to run away or to kill myself, but, but then something surreal happened. I found a metal door in the ground in the middle of nowhere. 
I was real unsure about what I might find under it, but what I did find was the aftermath of a massacre. More Terminators? That's exactly what I thought at first, but it turned out to be something even more scary. It looked like they decided to commit suicide. I couldn't understand it. To me, they had everything. Food, water. They even had a case of beer. So, I got shit-faced and started crying over my brother's death. But I realized something. I realized that I could maybe survive there. Did you stay there by yourself? No. I told everybody about the place. I felt I owed them. After that, we were all right. That night, I learned two things. Firstly, that it's okay to be scared. Secondly, that there are two sides to everybody. Ironically, me being a scaredy cat turned me into a good leader. And that's how I found that place, and that's what motivated me to help others. But Tucker? He was a leader from the start. But he had an ugly side, too. He killed those who opposed him. He was a real scumbag, but he was my brother. He made me want to be a good person for the both of us. Our hangover wasn't a high price to pay for that lesson. Need anything? Can I see your hardware? 